Hey everybody, this is Neil Pasricha, and welcome, or welcome back, to Three Books. Yes, you are listening to our epic 15-year countdown of the 1,000 most formative books in the world. We are a crazy, weird, bizarre podcast. Why, why crazy? Why weird? Why? Well, because we release every single chapter of our podcast on the exact minute of every single full moon and new moon all the way up to September 1st, 5.52 a.m., 2031. Why? Because we don't trust the Gregorian calendar. Nobody knows how many days February has. The moon is up in the sky. And if it looks super, super full or super, super, super new or empty, you know there's going to be another chapter of the show and we're going to go all over the place. We do all, all, all our interviews live and in person. We've gone up to the top of the Fisher Building in Detroit for Chapter 15, where we sat down with Mitch Album, author of the number one best-selling memoir of all time, Tuesdays with Maury, and many amazing books since then. We've gone to busy and loud coffee shops in Soho in Manhattan, where we've sat down in Chapter 22 with Tim Urban, author of one of my favorite blogs in the world, WaitButWhy.com. And working, I'm excited to report on an upcoming book. So there will be a Wait But Why or a Tim Urban book coming soon. Two more recently, chapter 31, where we went down to Omaha, Nebraska, and we sat down with Juniper Fitzgerald. Did you like that one? That was a fascinating conversation from my side. I learned so much. I sounded super stupid, I'm sure, (laughs) asking so many questions about sex work and decriminalization. Juniper, of course, is a former sex worker and the author of the world's first book, which depicts a sex-working parent called How Mamas Love Their Babies. On this show, we are attracted to people who are doing something new, something different, something provocative, who are giving voice to a a group that doesn't have one. I think Juniper Fitzgerald definitely did that in Chapter 31. And today, I'm super excited because in Chapter 32, we have a similar type of giving voice to the masses conversation. This one, we are going to Natalie Telfer's house in Toronto, which is home to, part of the home, to Kat and Nat. Who are Kat and Nat? Well, Kat and Nat, if you don't know them, then you're clearly not one of the million plus people who follow them online at Kat and Nat on every single social media. That's C-A-T-A-N-D-N-A-T. And they are the authors of this incredible book, called Mom Truths, embarrassing stories and brutally honest advice on the extremely real struggle of motherhood. How did I stumble upon these two incredible, badass, (laughs) straight-talking, R-rated, like totally, like there's these flamboyant, intellectually flamboyant and passionate women Honestly, it's a crazy story, and I, I share it at the beginning of this chapter, so I won't go into that now. But suffice to say, I was literally wandering around um, the prairies, <laughs> and I stumbled upon a casino where they were having a show, and a thousand women in tight pants, swishing wine glasses, almost stampeded me. Uh, and I was like, there's something going on here, but we talk about that later. This is also the first show since chapter one where I have brought my beautiful and lovely wife, Leslie. Many of you have said, hey, how do we hear Leslie more? And again, and this seems like a perfect one, Leslie is the mother of three boys, age five and under. Kat and Nat are the parents, are the mothers of seven children. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about motherhood. We're going to talk about parenthood. We're going to talk about the pressures that we put on ourselves to raise these perfect, you know, not rough around the edges children. But Why do we add so much pressure? How can we rid ourselves of that pressure? What is that pressure doing to us? What is it doing to our children? Should there be police on Instagram? Who controls your child's online identity? What stresses and anxieties are we living with in the world today, in our heads as mothers and as fathers, that we need to sort of be aware of and cognizant of and rid ourselves of? I am super, super excited to hang out on, I would call it a clean white couch, but they're going to refer to it as a messy white couch in Natalie's living room. They were super kind to invite Leslie and I up there where we get out four microphones for the first time ever on three books, 
and we have a conversation to uncover and discuss Kat and Nat's three most formative books through a conversation about parenthood. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the show. recording it's my first time with this new recorder so i think it's recording can everyone just do a hello there's leslie hello there's hey Nat. there's cat oh that's that was very sultry i thought so i wanted to be the sexy one of the group <laughs> <laughs> i never am so i thought i'd get Come right on. in there no i'm not it's okay not it ooh, ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> do you have do because you, you, you there's so there's two of you in everything is there is there like a the sultry one the sexy one the tall one the funny one do you do you have no, all these splits or is... switch sides <laughs> But Nat really wants to be sexy, so I give it to her. <laughs> I, so, I just think it's natural. Like, I'm yeah. not trying. If you think it's sexy, then. No, no, but she always is like, I want to be sexy. Costumes, no. I want to be sexy. I, Outfits, no, no, I, I don't be want sexy. to be sexy. I, I am. <laughs> it's like being authentic. You either are, you don't right. do. So there I you am go. Sexy. I'm okay, not she's so sexy. Yeah. Can't you tell? Can you both be? Is there, is there, yeah. is there space? There's space for both. To yeah. Be. yeah, totally. I just don't think we are, or I am. But yes, she is so I am sexy. Not sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this podcast is starting. This is normal. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We have, ready. you know, every <laughs> podcast we've ever been on, they have had to say, like when it's someone else's, they're like, well, that went off the rails quite quickly. You know, it's what the theme is. So I don't know if it's us or no, you no, guys. No, I like, because I did notice that with your podcast with Gary Vaynerchuk. It's like, yeah. it's even called All Hell Breaks Loose. Yep. Yeah. Same That's with, the title. Same with uh, Hilaria and Daphne Oz. They yeah. were like, well, I don't know what happened, but it <laughs> definitely went off the, like literally the craziest podcast we've ever done. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's because you both always have something to say, mm -hmm. and you both say it on top, like with each other at the same. So people are just like catch themselves listening. It's nice, <laughs> nice to listen to. Whoops. <laughs> no, it's a good. I meant I meant that as a comment. Well, I, I I'm so thankful to kind of start this conversation. Leslie introduced me to um, your stuff. How many years ago was it? I think it was two or three years ago. Yeah, video, like mini van, like car videos. Yeah, car videos. I remember one post in particular that really I got caught by, which was. One of your kids up on the counter getting something, some kind of snack. And I was like, first time mom says, like, careful you don't fall. Second time yeah. mom says, I, I don't know, honey, like goldfish before dinner. And third kid, third mom says, third time mom says, you go, girl. You got yourself your own snack. Yeah, yeah. You're like <laughs> proud. You're like, thank God, finally, I don't have to feed you yeah, anymore. You did it. Yay. You're good. Exactly. You survived. And I've always wanted such a big family. And I liked that that demonstrated in a way yeah. like the evolution of the, who you are as a mom, the growth yeah. that you go through. It's so true. So, you know, the first one, it's like the, you can find a lollipop on the floor and you're like, don't even touch it. The and lollipop, the next one, don't even like, show it to them. They yeah. taste yeah, sugar exactly. before a year. You're like, <gasps> and then the last one, you're like, hey. Whatever you can find, take it. Got it. Take it off the floor. <laughs> exactly. I think you're a better parent, like, as it goes on. Le totally. So Leslie resonates with the content, like, clearly. And, and I know so many moms do. And then I'm in Regina, Saskatchewan, like, a month or two ago. Just bizarrely, I'm, I'm giving a speech at a hotel. And, and the way it works in Regina is after you give your speech, it's like there's no there's no flights home to Toronto until the next morning at, like, 5 a.m. So I'm, like, all I'm doing that night is, like, walking around Regina I go to the casino. It's across the street from my hotel. Oh, my God. Um, I'm like, there's a swarm of women, like, kind of dressed in, like, kind of tight leather pants, high heels, like, yes. swish, swishing. I'm like, so I follow the crowd. As a man does. Right? I'm like, you where are they all I mean? going? I mean, you just totally on? baited yourself. Is there an Enrique Iglesias concert <laughs> going on I'm here? stuck in Regina. There's nothing to do. And Except now the truth leather comes pants yeah. everywhere and high heels. Exactly. So I follow this throng, for <laughs> lack of a bait. As, as it grows. Exactly. As it, as it, as it grows. And it, it literally, I'm, I'm like, in, mushed into the masses right into your show like, I, like I'm watching your, I'm like at the back with the ushers totally captivated I, I'm watching your show and you guys are it's, it's amazing so then I and then there's so the, there's the break I go to the bathroom of course there there is no there is no bathroom because yeah the women's bathroom exists and the men's bathroom has been painted like there's this new sign on it yeah. with women. two we women take over everything right so I was like I was like where am I gonna go pee? And, and not only that but there's like <laughs> huge amounts of women outside of both bathrooms so I'm like, where am I gonna go pee? And like, of course, being the one guy, everyone's like, slap it. Everyone's like, slap his ass. Yeah, I know. What are you doing yeah, here? I know. What are you doing? Go, uh, go play golf. You know, like people are like yelling stuff at me. They heckled you. They heckled me. So I eventually have no choice. I go, I go to the bathroom. The urinal. You did not take out the urinals. They're still existing in the bathroom. I'm dead. So, so I go. To, I'm in the bathroom going pee. Because I have to. Yeah. And the universe have, like, dividers. There's, like, some yeah. privacy there. But, of course, there's all these women, and they're, like, walking by, slapping my ass. No! Yes, yes. At your show. No! Wild no, night. And, and I'll tell you, that was the calmest show we've ever had. 
like in Calgary, we couldn't even, we had to basically, we had to throw it to uh, the DJ because they they were on their chairs screaming so loud. And we were like, well, we're done talking. Who wants to party? And they're all like, (laughs) <laughs> the ambulance got called there a few times. God, the that ambulance. is like the funniest oh story. Go play golf. Slap his ass. <laughs> yes. I, got, I got selfies of me in the like wine glass. Yep. And then, of course, by <laughs> being there and everyone seeing that I'm a guy by myself, I was then asked to take about a hundred other like pictures yeah, for yeah. other people. They're like, hey, you get this? You and then people the were like, photographer. And then people were like, of course, they're like, you know, get, get better lighting and zoom out. Like, what? <laughs> you, like everyone's correcting my pictures. <laughs> Welcome oh to the Cat Nat Show. So I buy a book. It's autographed. I give it to Leslie and come <laughs> home, right? So that, that, and I was like, I got to have these women on three books because <laughs> they have put their finger on the pulse of a community that I could not have experienced if I didn't see it myself. <laughs> like the what, the reson, like how deeply resonating these people were there. And of course, as you, as, as I know you guys always say, they're like, it was my first night off. Yeah. It was like I hadn't been here in ye- I haven't been out in years. Yeah. As you could tell, it was like Literally. get it all in Depends tonight. <laughs> yeah. And so I I was just thrilled to kind of have you on because I, I I was like, you are giving voice to like this gigantic, invisible mom, guilt, shame. Yeah. You know, this it's a amorphous giant cloud that you're putting your finger on. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, it you, we we feel it. And we're so lucky to be able to like do those things and go to those shows and meet those women and give them an excuse and permission to come out for their first time or maybe it's their millionth time, but to create an environment that you feel like no matter how you parent or how you be a woman, that you're, you belong there. And we love hosting those nights. And they're like therapy for us, just like they're therapy for them. They're like, oh, my gosh, like what you've done for me. And we're like, what you do for us every time you show up, either online or at a live show or when they buy our book or share their experiences. For a long time, I really struggled with why people come out. Mm-hmm. Like I actually couldn't <laughs> understand. Is that too loud? No, I mean, it's okay. okay. We like ambient noise on this <laughs> Okay, show. it's garbage. It? But anyways. <laughs> um and I, 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 for the holy first year, I really struggled with what our purpose was of doing this because it, it feels sometimes self-indulgent because you're on a stage and people are buying tickets, but they have to buy tickets because it costs a lot of money to put a show on, right? And I, I think, oh my God, it's a, I, it's a crazy story of how I came to understand, but I began to understand of how I got there was that some people just want to see a pure relationship where there's nothing in exchange except for a dynamic where it's like it almost restores your faith in yeah in humanity because we have we give people permission to have fun just by being together in a place we're allowing them to come out and be just have fun and be okay and be like accepted and i don't think a lot of people have that and so this tour i've really come to understand i think before we used to try to deliver content and mm. now we just live with them in the content and we really oh, kind of dictate where they want to go with the show um cuz every crowd is different and so that's been like the biggest lesson is i think no one is given the permission that I can do this. And, and then when and, you give it to them. people resonate with our friendship so much, whether they, like, it was like, oh, I had a best friend like that when I was younger, or me and my best friend are just like that, or I wish I had a best friend, and you guys fill that space for me. And it's just, and she's right, it's just like, it's just, it's such a fun relationship. And as you get older and you have so much pressure of being moms, it's like you forget sometimes how to laugh and smile. And then they're like, well, these girls can do it. I can do it too. Yeah, exactly. I think you give permission too that it's... It's like you don't have to be lonely in motherhood, which yeah. so many women feel so lonely in motherhood. Yeah. Yeah. And you invite them to, as you say, laugh and yeah. be together and have it be <laughs> like a shit show mm-hmm. together instead of it being that you're in your little silo crying tears of loneliness. And honestly, one of the reasons I feel like um, we can do it and we can relate to what they're saying is that in the beginning, we felt that way. We know what it feels like to feel alone. We know what it feels like to feel overwhelmed. We know what it feels like to not feel like you can leave your house and that everything you're doing with your baby is such a big deal and everything's so important and you just like can't stop thinking. So now we've, once we found each other, we felt a lot better. And then once we found the community, we uh, you know our online community, we feel even better. So... I know what, when they say how they're feeling, when they're feeling badly, I'm like, I, I was so there. I was so there. I'm, I'm glad I'm there. I was there so I can relate to how they feel. Yeah. Totally. So, so you can celebrate the out. growth too, right? Mm-hmm. Like just like you were saying about the snack. Yeah. The snack post. Like you can recognize the growth inside of yourself mm-hmm. as you make your way through, you know, 
tantrum after tantrum or year yeah. after year, birthday after year, birthday, and you start embracing laughing about it instead of yeah. crying about it, you feel yeah. more powerful in your motherhood instead of powerless. And that totally. transformation that you are so authentic and honest about that happened within both of you mm-hmm. is invited and celebrated mm-hmm. in all of the women who, who are part of your community. Mm-hmm. Like we're in your house right now. There's garbage being picked mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not right. Yeah, like, there we're is. On a, we're on a couch, which would you describe this as a messy couch? Uh, it's dirty. People always say, how do you keep it so white? It's not white. It just looks white in pictures. <laughs> right. It's filthy. Right. And so and you've invited <laughs> us into your into your home. We're sitting on your couch. We're having this conversation. We really appreciate you kind of letting us in, come come in here. Your home is so lived into, right? From yeah. When we drove up, we saw, you know, the basketball. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hockey net. It's, net. It's, it's, it's well used. It's, there's six the people rock here. It's on a top well of the used garbage, house. So the raccoons can't knock it over. You know, like it's a the real brick. family house. And the there's, the, the, yeah. yeah, there's. I, I do say sometimes when I pull up to the house, because my, on the other half of my house, so I'm in a semi, uh, she has older kids and you just, we share a driveway and her house is always so <laughs> Put pristine together. and ours literally looks like often like a junkyard. And it's like a community center. Like everyone is walking in and out of here all the time. Like we, the doorbell rings all, I don't know if it's a package. I don't know if it's a person. I don't know if it's someone fixing something, but it's like open door policy. And oh, that's what I wanted. Exactly. When I envisioned my future. That's the dream. Yeah. It's crazy. Is it? Is that, is that the dream? For, I mean, that seems. No. Too, no. Cause I, I was like, that sounds horrifying to me. No, oh my it, God. Amazing. It, to it, a lot of men. It's horrifying. horrifying. To my husband. No, the messier, the better. Well, just the, the idea of the doorbell always yes. ringing and people coming in and out. That, you never yeah. know who's going to be there. You like oh, that. I yeah. Love I like, that. I love that. Yeah. I like it too. not like that. I come from a family of five though. Five kids in my house. And, but her husband's the same, like you. Like it's yeah. like it's like it's like know. a panic attack. So how does he deal with that? <laughs> Sometimes we get into it, you know. And I'm just <laughs> like, this is what I always wanted. You know, I want people to be like walk. I want to be have people here and say, hey, stay for dinner and yes. to, like defrost a little more meat, you know. And yeah. he's like. Oh, this is craziness and he just gets like agitated so sometimes I try to understand his perspective for like a couple of hours but then we go back to the shit show because <laughs> you're in charge yeah exactly let's be clear let's be um clear. uh let's jump into your your, your book because we I, I we can keep the conversation going and as we flow them through these three amazing books that you've given us and I I think was it was it you now that said like uh or Kat, you said, like, I'm embarrassed about these books. No, I am. Because I was like... Because we like, have a picture... policy on the show. No book shame. Okay. No book guilt. We have I crazy, have... weird books that are... because I feel like as an adult, by this time, I should have <laughs> read more books. I should have more deep books that Dude, have changed you wrote my a book. life. You, you, you wrote, wrote a book. book. Yeah. So you know what? You're not reading. You're, you're writing. Right. Touche. So busy writing. <laughs> I didn't have You know what I mean? Not, you're let's... quoting David Foster Wallace in your book. You're like, oh, you're, there's, there's no higher bar than exactly, that. Exactly, Natalie. <laughs> you take it, babe. <laughs> but and, and all we could come up with was some kids' books. But I mean, that's our world. That's but our and, life. And the, and the root of that thought, though, that I can't believe I'm, you know, or I should have, the root of that is is humility, which is what people like the idea. Because I off I do talk to guests on the show that will put forward three quite deep, dense academic books, mm-hmm. and there is something that's harder to get. Do you have into. to read them all? I try to read oh, every single book on the show. Oh, terrible job you have! That yeah. is, I mean, yeah, you like people re- like reading. You like reading. I do like reading. But books you like. <laughs> I like that. Oh. You people like, like reading. It there still exists. becomes a little bit like grade 11 English yeah. where like you have yeah. a book list that yeah. you have to read. Yeah. I am looking forward to the summer because we're trying to uh, bank a few shows kind of over so then I'm like, oh, I can read whatever I want again, you oh. know, because I'm trying to read each person's three books so that I read a thousand formative books over the over the kind of the 15 I'm years. I'm so tired so wait, for we you. Made, no, but we made it quite easy for him. We yes. Really yeah. I was thrilled. And it's all online. We have, I, oh, yeah, we did. I was thrilled to read What Should Danny Do by Gany and Nadir Lee. Levy, illustrated by Matt Sadler, who says on the cover, nine stories in one. So Danny is a real-life superhero in training, learning about the most important superpower of all, the power to choose. In this book, you decide how the story will end by making choices for Danny. You'll have a blast trying to reach all nine different endings. This book was published in... I always like to say this. There are some people that listen to our show that love filing books in Dewey Decimal System, including me. Um, <laughs> Dewey Decimal, I've heard that in a while. <laughs> love Dewey Decimal System. Uh, this book was published in 2017. Um, and, of course, I already read the summary, so I'm not going to read that again. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a choose-your-own-adventure book with the boy that goes through life or goes through a day deciding what he should do, whether he should hit his brother, whether he should try to work with, together with him. It's a fascinating book. Tell us about your relationship. I don't know whose book this is or if it's both of yours. With What Should Danny Do by Ganit and Adir 
Levy. So the people who wrote this book sent us this book. We had no idea what it was going to be about, and we opened it, and it was a, it was immediately a favorite book. Mm-hmm. We ordered a bunch more books to give them to your kids' classroom. I gave them to, like, the kindergarten classroom, and I gave – I think, yeah, it's, it's a great conversation starter for a lot of people who are want to talk about choices. It's a different – I think it's a different way – I don't like the word discipline, but like to help understand the choices you make and the consequences they have. Yeah. So, and and the they kids get to because when you because when you yell and scream for your your breakfast cereal, the juice gets knocked over and you lose your pancakes. Yes, it's just a series of events. That and I think turn. the control for the kids to have is nice. They get to choose it, and they get to be bad, and then they get to be good. Yeah. And yeah. then they get to be bad. You know what I've I mean? Like the, it's I've fun. Got the one kid that always likes to read it the bad way he's like no let's make he gets the little one to make the bad decisions i'm like we all know where this is going We've yeah, read yeah, yeah 400 yeah. times but you're not going to get to go to the park no you're not going to the park but it's <laughs> every every kid that we've read it to i've given it for some gifts too everybody loves it and actually the illustrator i was just looking the illustrator sent us a picture of our family in the same in the same i had never have seen this it used to be in a picture frame right there but you know this house and it's gone. It's Spanish. But it yeah, it was, it was <laughs> illustrated did our, us and our kids. And it was what, what would Cat not do. That's where this came from. I think, a lot, of, I think yeah. a lot of moms are always, and maybe dads, but I'm a mom, so we often talk about it from the mom perspective. So dads don't get mad. But a lot of moms um, are looking for ways to communicate with their kids. And, you know, we're always, if we can do two for one and have story time and teach them something, yes. that's a freaking win, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, so and they I, immediately kind of, understand what the book is about and they know that it's a lesson but they still love it just there's so many different op- different roads you can go down and the pictures are great but it's really about the lesson of giving them choice and then you can then in your parenting you can go back and you can refer to the book and when they're having a hard time making a decision and you can say remember in the book what and then they can stop and think it also gives it also has just the perfect amount of teaching and then also like just Fun, fun and letting them be them like that he that it is about him being a superhero like yes. every five-year-old boy wants to pretend that they're a superhero yeah. and it mm-hmm. connects it to that and it doesn't have a big long lecture at the end about you know you made all these good choices no. and so therefore you get to do all these fun things it just guides them through in a really nice and it also lets you know if you do end up in a bad place there's always tomorrow and you can learn from your lessons exactly my kids the way they make me do it is they make me change their names to whoever is oh yeah <laughs> it's the really kid hard though because it's like uh, they use their names a lot but so hard when you're tired yes yeah, so hard <laughs> like, and, then I, and I say Daniel, and then you like, skip Teddy. over and then you're like he's in bad he's in trouble he got kicked out of the house well, no I'm joking That's I fun. wanted to say a special thank you because my son who is a maximizer insisted that we read all nine stories of course the first time that we oh, read it God. so he's like look at every page Make sure we've done that option. Oh no, you go back to this page because that means we have to go there. Like we needed to know every possible yeah. situation oh, that Danny, could, Danny could get into. So they have a second book, a by the way, that story. is on Amazon. And it's a good one too. I forget what it's called. I should know it, but it is in the same series, and I think it's different choices. It's like okay. a situ- it's like situational. I think in school. Okay, like, so fun. I have to get that one too. Yeah, it's so awesome. So but choice, agency. You know, the, the power to choose. It even says in the cover that introducing the power to choose. <clears throat> this is interesting too because you also said like the idea of reading all these books you said like exhausts you like the yeah. idea right mm-hmm. whereas it energizes me and I'm like why is that wow. but I, I see the work you're doing and even just observing right. it <clears throat> Leslie's showing me your Insta stories or whatever I'm like oh my god there's that many like in one 24 hour period I was like there's, <laughs> I was like that's like there's like 20 of them mm, yeah. or whatever but I'm, I'm like that that exhausts me yeah, like it's I, what you're you know, passionate about right yeah. It's totally what you're, yeah exactly but it's also like thinking through choices that we make as adults is not mm-hmm. a dissimilar framework completely nope. you know yeah and and we uh, you know when when cat and i often try to reminisce and for our podcast because people want to find out like how, how did this come to be and everything and we look back at like these small, it's like sliding doors, like these small moments where we made this decision that led to mm-hmm. something else and something else and the lessons that we've learned and the the, and the the relationships that we've had with people have all like, like everything, it's no coincidence how everything got to be and it's because of the decisions the two of us made together. The choices we made. And do you see that, so looking forward now, like you're in a place that's amazing, you know, it's amazing, you've, capt- you've captivated such a big community. You're, we were talking to you just before you go back out on tour, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. next week, you're hitting back on tour. And, um, and now how do you think about joy? Like, you know, kids are getting a bit older. They're very, they're very big part of your community, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like you share them. Mm-hmm. Right. And we think about that too. Cause we're like, how do we decide what to share? Mm-hmm. 
do you like do you, do you have conversations with them about that or do you how how does There's it navigate as it gets older? For us, I think that and yeah. I I, I the, it's funny you brought up the the truth the mum truth about dads we did, and I was like a lot of people personalize our journey, but our journey is often about women mm-hmm. and our feelings, not about people. Yeah. So we don't often call out a kid. We yeah. call out a stage that a kid is in because I think universally our kids all go through stages and often that stage is relatable based on the feelings you have from that stage. And, you know, I think that what we're noticing is that when we travel, a lot of women have the same feelings. And even if their husbands or partners are working full time and involved, the bulk of what falls on a woman is significant. And so I think men are like, yeah, but I do this too. It, I'm like, it negates what a woman does when men try to be like, but this is me too. So for us, we're always talking about sort of the feelings that come with and what women have to do in order to make a family work. And I just showed her a poster that John Legend just did. And he's like, dads do one thing and they're celebrated women do one thing and it's like that's expected or it's like when you see a dad with a kid having a tantrum everyone's like you got this you're okay if you see a mom with a kid who's having a tantrum they all shame her and they're like you're a bad mom because your kid is acting out the the yeah totally you know what i mean this this very different conversation that we have is we're just tr- always trying to put women first and give them a voice that when i go to the park with my kids people are like wow look at you mm-hmm. like you got the even, kids even all by yourself you're babysitting yeah, yeah. that's like my biggest <laughs> yeah. pet peeve. The parent yeah. is said, "You're babysitting," and it's like, "No, these are these are his children. Like yeah. he's with his children." Yeah, and Mark has actually shared with me his experience since I've been on the road, and the kids are in tons of activities, and so on the weekend, Mark will be like at the hockey rink or at the baseball or the soccer, all the things. And he said, so often, actually, women and other mothers come up and they're like, "Wow, it's like so. It's I can't believe you 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 do this. Like, how are you handling it all?" And I guess my husband's at the, at a position where he's kind of like, he knows very well nobody's, when he's not, not there, no one's asking me how to, how, like, how, how, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. like, good for you. That must be so hard on you that, like, your husband's away. For him, they're all like, okay, Natalie traveling all the time. He almost feels like, you know, he's getting, like, too much props for what I do all the time, which in the moment he can appreciate. But, like, I think, think, think deep down, he probably is like everybody else is like, yeah, I'm fucking amazing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But yeah, he says it's it's really a lot of other mothers who are just like how 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 are they handling it? Maybe it's because they want to know because they want to start to do it too, and they want to hear his experience. Like, yeah. What's it like? It, how do you get? How do you? How, how, yeah. How did she get you to be able to? How help? did she get you? Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, to and we it. try not to sell anybody. Like our platform is not about taking people down. Our platform is much more about kind of uplifting people, but letting women know like you're not alone. Because mo- the reality is most women um, don't have a hugely supportive spouses who are are giving them accolades being like you are amazing way mm-hmm. to go like one thing for us was well, before we had kids we had this uh wedding uh pre-wedding consultant what's it called <gasps> like a therapist like she, a, she married us so she was like a, oh a past not a past not it not a, religion. We had a, a pastor like a basic it was yeah. a non-denominational marriage service and marriage ceremony and one of the things that great she did name by us, the way revved up yeah. That was the name it of it. Was? Delivering secular spiritual services to secular societies. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. And she was really awesome. And one of the things that she offered to us as part of her service was kind of like a little like pre-marriage course. Oh, wow. And it was it was really helpful. Well, the thing I was going to take from that course, which was great. I remember lots of things from it. Like one thing was like work. To, so one of the things was like, Neil, how much of the parent, t- parenting do you envision taking right and Leslie did that about every different responsibility right like, and so you what write it down of the time Leslie do you expect to pay the bills yeah Neil, what percentage of the time do you expect so, to pay so the I wrote so I wrote down 25 percent for 25 percent for parenting and luckily Leslie had written down 75 percent like wow. on her own sheet we had we had we had through I guess conversations through dating and, and being, we had somehow settled on that and, and it sounds hard to say that like I'm 25 percent of the parenting but I'm, I'm, I am probably honest. about 25% of the parent. I, I, lo- I love my kids. I'm with them as much as I can it's, be. And, and uh, that's the difference. But I, I wrote think down that number but and consciously. And you understand also the, like the, the full, you know, vast depth array of what parenting really includes. Like everything from communication with teachers to. Holding a baby inside your stomach. Okay, to planning yeah. birthdays. Yeah, yeah. To that's, and that's seeing what, a psychologist about some concern. Like all, it's not just literally no, like putting a kid to bed. No. That's not what he's. Yes, I bet a lot of men would have said 50-50. I was just so, I was just so, and I, I, I'd be lucky if I did 25. 
Yeah, even yeah. though I wrote that, that yeah. was a goal for me. And the thinking knowing how much I work also, too. And, yeah. you know? and, and that's really wow. what it was about is uh, every day is just more pressure on women. Like if yeah. Mother's Day is more pressure on women. Like birthdays are more pressure on women because you want to make sure that, you know, it's exactly. just, it's like this idea that we still haven't popped we, yet. We were just talking about that because um, we were saying, you know, we don't really relate with the pressure for our children to be like pianists and to also be like hockey players and have all of this stuff because we're just, you know, that is, doesn't really get us going. But the whole idea of having children that are, that have healthy relationships as adults, that have, that mm-hmm. adults that have really strong mental health, like all this stuff is a whole other layer of pressure oh, that we're putting yeah. on ourselves as this generation of parenting. And it's like, oh no, now we're really chilled out yeah. and we're not going to be over programming. If you want them kids. to be normal. But at the same time, we really hope that they're going to have beautiful mental health. We're not going to leave any room <laughs> for them to be real humans that yeah, suffer yeah, yeah. in whatever way they suffer because they will. It's a different yeah. kind of pressure. All of our children will. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. So we don't we don't actually, in terms of what we share about our kids, I'll take it back to that. We <laughs> um we don't we will talk about a journey and rather than an actual this like toddlers are jerks universally. It's just a fact, but they're amazing and hilarious. Yeah. You put it as stages, though. Yeah. Stages. De- depersonalize, really depersonalizes it and respects, um, you know, however you want to position it. But also, it connects with your community in a way that's like, oh my gosh, I remember when my kid didn't sleep and I'm or not my alone. kid didn't eat. Yeah. Mike, I'm, exactly. not, I'm not crazy. Well, there's this article on Fast Come. I don't know if I um, sent it to you or not, Les, but it was like a few months ago. I get this email. I write for Fast Come once in a while, so I get this email every month. It's like the top ten articles internally mm-hmm. stats wise so i'm like always click them to see like what am i doing wrong and so i click them i click them and the number one article is like the 14 year old girl i think or 16 year old mm-hmm. saying like i couldn't believe there's all these photos of me as a child public published on on my parents really it was the most viral article on fast company ever like and my it was, parents created an identity my parents for created me an identity for me consent. online yeah yeah i've consent. heard this. yeah and like the kids now of a conscious age now where they're like why is there nude pictures of me nude pictures of me at a, as a two-year-old jumping through a sprinkler is she pissed on yeah, yeah that's where it comes from. And, and she's like I'm, I'm here by deleting my social media identity so i can reclaim start it again. And, and, and start it again later in life if, I want. if you go through our feed it's very lean of our children yeah. Like it's very, very lean. It's often Nat and I, un, un, de- deliberately that reason, or it's a group. Mm-hmm. Very, very rarely is it. When they were younger, it was different. I feel because, like you said, their identity is less, it, less. But the older they've gotten, sort of the less we have. Uh, you're per- very good about that in your book too. You know, like even leaving kids' names out when you're yeah. talking about stories. Just a kid was going through this as you say connecting to the feelings that yeah the and, and the stories we do share is often about us again or a, a, par- a parental situation of what someone went through that people can relate to and then there's an ending that shows that it's okay like mm-hmm. that we went through it you know that's so aware so aware of the story i love that so the, the awareness but also what's wrong but what is wrong with the opposite like there's a lot of people mo- most of my friends i would say who are very public about every aspect of their child's childhood mm-hmm. and who like you're proud, you're sharing with family and friends, you're, it's, uh, it's on public feeds. I, I'm not raising it to say there's a right or wrong way, more just like what, how do we think about what to do? You yeah, know? I think we're living it. We always talk about this, yeah. that we're in, a, and we're in a, t- a time right now where we, uh, I, like there's no courses on social media for kids. Blows my mind. Like parents don't know how, like why aren't there police on social media? Like yeah. why can you say anything? Oh, that's interesting. But, yeah, there should be. And there should be like, you're ticketed, you're suspended, you're kicked <laughs> off, you've lost your <laughs> totally. license, you've, I bet right? there will be. It'll be that, and then there'll be a whole new, new kind of job that kids Yeah, like be. why can you go and threaten to <laughs> kill someone? I want to be an Instagram but, police. I got yeah, a yeah. ticket. I got I a ticket for showing be. my butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I really, I think there should totally be yes, uh, Instagram a Instagram police idea. and you get slapped a ticket. It's a whole other space that kids are having to navigate. Yeah, yeah. and parents don't know how to. Terrifying. It's just like, I don't know why we don't have courses on relationships why we don't have courses on how to be a problem solver why we don't have courses like the real stuff there's and calculators for math let's get over that and the, let's focus on it seems to me though by the time you'd make a course like that you'd also the whole world like it keeps flipping so quickly like relationships and how to survive in day-to-day situations will never end math is ending yeah. There's calculators. No more need to <laughs> memorize your multiplication. And you facts. also don't really need to know how to type. There's Surrey. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I shouldn't say that. But I have to write now. Like, actually, write. My hand is so sore. After, like, New one... class is how to talk to Siri properly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how to enunciate. We'll never, we'll never get old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's a great transition, uh, if I can jump on that, to, like, how to navigate social media. How do we figure out this world? To your second book, if I don't mind, because there's a whole I'm chapter. I'm obsessed with this book. So, I, mean, I have probably sold... 
seventy-five thousand of them. You've just sold seventy-five thousand copies of, of what would Danny do of, by talking yeah, about yeah. it on, on this. Mom Truth is even better than all of them combined. <laughs> you can buy that anywhere you buy there a book. You go. Just so you know, it's the best book ever. It Dads, is, pick it up. It is. I, I, I found it captivating. We'll talk. I'm going to be I'm I'm adding teasing. an intro to it, this as well. So this book, the second book, is the Confidence Code for Girls: Taking Risks, Messing Up and Becoming Your Amazingly Imperfect, Totally Powerful Self by Caddy Kay and Claire Shipman, best-selling authors of The Confidence Code. Did you read this book at all? Yes. What did you think? Lo- loved it. He Captivated turned to me on Saturday I have, night I have, like, this book is so good. I was so up I at like 11 it. p.m. reading so it. I'm obsessed with it because it's based in facts and science, which is so powerful for – um, like when I'm, when I'm reading it with my daughter, so I read it with her because there's a lot of concepts in there that can kind of be overwhelming yeah. and it says it's, for age eight to 12 on the Yeah. It, she's nine and it's kind okay, of blowing yeah. her mind. Like when, yeah. because of the unfairness of the world, like they call out, you know, it makes you challenge the way you're, it's making girls see the world in a different lens. So challenge what you're seeing, challenge what you're thinking, like girls are losing confidence at the age of nine for a reason. It's because of how we've shaped the world. So it's like when it, you... That's true. Girls are losing confidence at the age yeah, of nine. Yeah, it drops at nine. I they didn't hit know that. nine and they stop believing in themselves. They stop stop asking questions. They start looking at themselves. Why Why don't I... We see it. Why do I look like this? Why, why am I fat? Why am I... So... But you'll go into a, a sports store and there'll be one soccer, soccer cleat for girls and 15 mm. for boys. Mm-hmm. You'll go into... Mm-hmm. Uh, my uh, Olivia's like, why are there never girl sports on TV? Why is it always mm. boys? Like everything they're taught when they see yeah. TV images of bosses, it's often male bosses. When you see girl relationships in TV, they're often mean to each other. Very rarely are oh, there pa- positive girls. Page seventy eight of this book says Target introduced a new girls T shirt with a bat girl to do list on the front. It was pink and proclaimed dry clean cape, wash Batmobile, fight fight crime and save the world. In 2016, Gap ran an ad with a photo yeah. of a boy and a girl. The little boy was wearing a T-shirt with a picture of Albert Einstein on it, and the text saying, little scholar. The girl wore a sweater with the letter G on it, accompanied by the text, social butterfly and talk of the playground. Yeah. Oh, that was this. God. That was a two 2000, years. 2016 Gap. Yeah. Like yeah. the biggest company two is years ago. Is that not mind-blowing That is years mind-blowing. Ago. Mind-blowing. Yeah, so I just, heartbreaking. It, there's a yeah. whole bunch of stats in there that, and c- c- scenarios that teach you, like, this will happen, and, I mean, the biggest lesson I take from it, which we talk about all the time, is you earn confidence, you you don't teach it, and you don't get it. Like, it's not something I can give to my kids, yeah. boys or girls, you gotta earn it, and that means messing up, that means failing, that means your parents not rescuing you, that means taking risks, and, you know, I think as parents, we're constantly trying to, um, to make our kids not feel uncomfortable because when we see our kids uncomfortable, it makes us uncomfortable and we don't know how to handle that. And I think the biggest lesson I've learned from that book is lessons that you would not necessarily... I, I, I encourage men to read it too, just from their perspective. I think boys, you can if you uh, have a, a if boy. If you didn't say for girls, I mean, other than a couple chapters, yeah. I, I thought it was totally related. Yeah, relatable. Uh, my daughter this weekend, she had soccer and she's not a risk taker and that's why we kind of read this book and her her she didn't know her position because they've changed them recently and I'm like your job I don't care how you play your job is to ask your coach how you play that position Mm -hmm. that's your job because she would have just played it safe and not done anything and I see her sitting there on the bench like just like dying right like I can and I'm watching her and then I see her just stand up and walk over and it's a it's a male coach it's a dad who had to fill in for the coach and I can just see her being like dying and she asked him and I was like you just earned a piece of confidence Mm -hmm. like you earned it you that wasn't something yeah I could have I could have told you the position but that would have done nothing for you and now you've learned to have a voice, how to speak. You know what I mean? And so, I remember those moments as a kid, like when I felt really shy or really uncomfortable and I had to do it and how good I felt after. And that I actually feel, even to this day, when there's things that we have to do that we don't really want to do, but we know it'll be good, you feel like you, you're you growing. Like you you can feel your, your personality growing and your confidence growing. Yeah. So, I, but yeah, the even like the, the way they, they teach about um, – like they give you a scenario which we all know is going to happen. She's trying to make friends, and she and she's trying to. She t- sends a text to one of the girls in the cool group, and she's kind of got in, and she's like, "Can you believe what so and so wore?" But it was a group text, so it went to the girl she was Ugh. talking about, you know. And she and obviously you're like, "I'm going to die," and then it talks you through. You're not going to die. Like just the feelings of those uncomfortable feelings and how to come back from that. And 
why apologizing is okay and why messing up is okay and why fear is okay. And just it is – it's one of my favorite reads of all time. Well, and it sounds like this book – really helps to articulate some of those things that are so hard to talk about, you Mm -hmm. know, and then you're articulating it with your daughter even further by those examples. And I think that's what your whole platform does is articulating some of these things that for generations upon generations upon generations, women have felt it Mm -hmm. and it hasn't been articulated Mm -hmm. anywhere. And so they haven't felt like they can say it out loud and they Mm -hmm. haven't had that voice to, to connect. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that, then that's when power comes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all of those other emotions, fear, shame, judgment start to dissipate. Mm-hmm. And and fun that book also has it it brings in um, people with different ethnicities and mm-hmm. do wearing different things like yeah. what they're moving to a new school mm-hmm. and they have to wear a hijab and what does that there, there's an Indian boy nervous about pre- pre- performing a, a wedding dance at his cousin's wedding I was like oh my gosh I can totally <laughs> yeah. I can totally relate to that but, feeling and I've always said no to doing the wedding dances yeah and my cousins have done them and he shows like. Why could, why did they do it and I not? And what, you know, what was the difference? And yeah. I was like, the examples were very, very diverse. Yes, which I mm-hmm. love too, because it's not just one dimensional. So yeah, no, that book is. One thing I one. heard though in, in the, in the stories you just shared about the book was like, is like the idea of building in confidence partly comes from taking risks, partly comes from being resilient as a child. And one thing I heard you talk about with Gary Vee on his, on, on his uh, show was he's like, how are these, you know, you, uh, I can't remember which one of it is like roll, they're rolling quarters when they're growing up and now they're now they're the kids of hockey players. So like mm-hmm. how do we build in the ripping off your arm? I think he called it mm-hmm. sense of resilience that comes from truly formative experiences. And I'm asking because I'm curious, yeah. too, like Leslie and I um, have worked really hard and we are giving our kids a great life. And it's also like, how do we give them a bit of a harder life so like that adding a little bit of grit? How, how do you add grit to kids that are growing up soft? I, I have I. I have a, I've, I, w- I was a social worker previous to this, and I always remember um, someone, I, th- I think it's Allison Schaefer, mm-hmm. and she's like, kids are, you can't spoil your kids physically. Like, you, you gifting them things will not make them spoiled. What will spoil, a spoiled child is someone who is accommodated constantly for. So for everything, like I said, when they're uncomfortable, when they complain about a teacher and you go in and tell the teacher to accommodate your child, or when they t- face a tough situation and you're like, I'll fix it for you. Let you're, that's, you're, you're, you're right. That's wrong. Like it's every- The snowplow parent. I think it, they called it that in the New York Times. It's actually most yeah. parents. Yeah. It's not, yeah. I, yeah. I think if you stop and think about how you get defensive for your kids, right? Like if there's a problem- It comes so naturally. We just want natural. to clear everything out of the way. And if you, if you think about- um, problems at school with other kids you want to jump in and you, you you're like let's have a, a meeting with everybody and let's get this you know it rather than stepping back and being like uh, like it, it happens from kindergarten all the way up to it actually happens when they're toddlers and you're like okay how do you feel how do you, you know it's like this this weird thing that we do as as parents and we don't ever want them to once my kid had a birthday and my mother was like, we should buy everyone a present because that's not fair. And I'm like, can I swear? Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. mom, fuck no. It's their birthday. Not everybody gets a present. What, yeah. it's, what does that teach I, them? I, I, but I've done that too. I mean, I oh. totally can relate to your mother because I'm like, oh, well, how do we make sure? Be, people even buy gifts for the other kids. When that's the kids what you wanted to do yeah. for yeah. everybody. Yeah. I'm like, like what is that <laughs> lesson? It's your birthday, but everyone gets to open a present. I was like, no, like yeah. it's like she can't bear to think that that it's not special yeah. enough or it's not big enough. I'm like you're chasing something that does not exist. Like not giving them everything is not a terrible thing, and saying no is not a terrible thing, yeah. and letting them have to fail and yeah. not like for now. them. But I do, I, I, I do. The question that you're saying is like give them a little bit more grip because I throw them to the streets. Uh, like our, our upbringings, we we had we we were thrown some challenges that I mean I don't know the kids are still young who knows what's going to happen but like my children are so much more privileged or growing up more privileged like as far as a bunch structural of stuff like the big yeah. the big things the big they have things. a roof over their head they yes a, and there's yeah. they have the, the, there's no they have no worries about any of that stuff and so I I I am aware I think to myself like I I feel like a part of who I am is because of some of the struggles that that we went through, but but they won't have those. They so. will. I, I don't believe that. I believe because the feelings are the same. Like, just because your situations are different, it doesn't mean all of us have the same feelings no matter what part of the world you live in. 
there there are different depths, but just be just because maybe your hurt is deeper. There's no deeper hurt. Like everyone feels hurt on different levels. And they come through different channels these days. Yeah, but you can feel hurt. We've Mm -hmm. all felt hurt by somebody and uh, to different extents, but the level of hurt is often the same of what the feeling is. So I think that in terms of resilience, in terms of like, you don't have to deprive them in order for them to be well-adjusted, resilient children, but you do have to let them get figure figure the fuck out yeah. by themselves without make sure you're not accommodating support for them, them but don't fix that, it that's harder that well, that's, that's the muscle harder. to grow that's yeah, the hard muscle for parents and even for like money too you know if you've got the money and they're asking for something and you're like i've got it i could just give it to you but like instead of we want them to earn it the same way that we needed to earn it you know yeah yeah how I, do you think about allowance i mean i think allowance is great if i could ever remember to give it to them you know, I mean, I still expect the same, like, it's not like you do this and so I give you money. I expect specific things around the house. Like, one of the kids does all these jobs and my daughter was, um, I asked her to do a whole bunch of things yesterday for Father's Day and she was just like, ugh. And I was like, I do not make you do enough jobs. Like, we need more defined jobs. And that's not to earn an allowance for me. I think it to earn an allowance would teach them about money and saving money and put, like, you know, they all got a bank account. and then, So the idea was that I would give them an allowance and then they'd take it to the bank, learn how to use the bank machine, save money. If they really want something, they could buy it. I just got lazy and I don't think they've had an allowance in like six months. Maybe yeah, me too. I, I, I made my kids start to clean their rooms in the morning. They're so pissed at me and I'm like, they're oh. so good at it, though. They become such a habit. Yeah, of at my house. Just my, they, they'll just make their beds. And yeah, then they're no. Pissed if someone doesn't make their bed. Because I haven't. I I've, I've laxed on that, but they. Um, yeah, no. I'm like, and one I went takes into your kids' rooms this week, and everybody looked pretty neat. They did it, but t- this morning I forgot because uh, oh, okay. one barf, so I got a little thrown <laughs> off. But, um, <laughs> I and also one they empty the dishwasher every morning. I'm like, but oh, they have oh. to have all three of them empty the dishwasher. How'd you get this going? You got some good rhythms here. Yeah. What age do you think you started? What, that? Uh, Chloe yeah. is three, and she does the whoa, the forks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, well, we need to learn from this. How'd you get this? How'd you snap all this into place? Uh, <laughs> empty the dishwasher. I think, I <laughs> the think end. you just need to, yeah, I think you just need to start doing it. You have to be consistent. like, And, and, and they're going to complain. Of course. And they're not going to do it perfectly. But you just, like, if they are not doing anything, you have a problem. And it's the best when somebody points it out to you. Like, I remember my, um, my sister-in-law. She's a stay-at-home mom. She's there every day. And she has three kids. And they have been making their own lunches and breakfasts as, as like, they were like five and they would do everything themselves. And I was like, what am I? She's like, stop packing my lunch. Stop making their breakfast. So one of mine has figured it out. And he comes down, he makes himself eggs and he do, like packs his own lunch and all that. But the other ones don't quite figure it out. And one of them will take so long. I end up doing it for her, doing everything for her. She's the oldest. That's the instinct of all of us. And also we done. feel like. Make a lunch for a child. My parents <laughs> made lunch for me. We feel like bad that. moms if we're not, right? Like you think yeah. that there's something about not taking care of them if you don't do it. And that's just good. Like you're like often my kids will be like, can you do it? I'm like, oh God, I, I want them to remember me doing things for them. So I'm going to do it. And then I'm like, I'm teaching you bad lessons. Figure it out. Well, this you is know? also interesting because you address mom shame and guilt. And here we are. We can say a mom who makes their lunch can feel guilty for doing so because mm-hmm. they aren't Providing the formative experience of making your own lunch. Yeah. The one who doesn't also does because yeah. they're like, well, this kid's going to go to school hungry. Yeah. That is just exactly. parenting on every level. Like, yeah. Shame on either side it, of yeah. it. Yeah. Either way you do it, it's good. I'm Some sitting of- here being like, shit, I have a five year old and he doesn't yeah. unload the dishwasher. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? No, you know what? He's not going to have any start with the like start with tomorrow. He'll be undoing <laughs> that dishwasher. Oh, yeah. just, you know what? Start with the forks. And they, yeah. they, I, I yeah, bet the he'll, I they bet like he'll it. want to do it. Yeah. Like little kids are so excited to help, and we squash that. I don't know why, but we we are like, no, we tell them they're doing it wrong all the time. Like it's just so crazy to be it, in the world where there's shame everywhere you look. Like there's there's guilt and shame at every single. So you know corner. we have a new theory on this, right? What we have a huge theory on this, and I think it's pretty epic. I, w- because this is another theme we see everywhere. And I'm like, stop and think who who is the biggest shamer and the biggest guilter in your life. It's ourselves. We we as women are constantly having the conversation about what bad moms we are and how terrible we are and apologizing to our kids for doing things that shouldn't be apologized for. So we are teaching over and over again that like when we go on tour, it's like we're like, oh my God, we're leaving our kids. No, now we're like, we're going. We're coming. We're not leaving. We're just going. We're going to work and we're coming back. And we, we've stopped yeah. this Changing the internal the mental narrative and the dialogue, it. and I think that us individually need to start. Yeah, star stop this. Like this, it's almost like it starts from inside. Yeah, the thoughts we think becomes the words we say, and, and the words and we, we say, say become it to our, our kids, actions. which is even yeah. worse. And this is the same I see on my one of my uh, 
person I won't name is always like looking in the mirror saying like, oh my God, I don't look good in this. Oh my gosh, I'm so fat. And I'm like looking at, at our kids. I'm like, they're going to pick up on that. Oh, a hundred percent. And you same, know? same with the guilt, same with the shame, same with mm-hmm. being self-deprecating, same with like, what if you were like, mommy's going to work and it's awesome. They're, our, our youngest are the best at, at being like, have a great show. Like, the, the most well-adjusted really because, because you being the most grown because yes. we're not apologizing for yeah. what we're doing we're owning it and being okay with it it's interesting for me as a father to learn from as well because I do feel that guilt and shame when I leave for work say I, last week I was in three cities in the state so I'm leaving Sunday I'm coming back Tuesday I'm coming back to see them then I'm going out Wednesday I'm going back Thursday and I'm so I was like I'm gonna miss you so much and I'm yeah. sorry I'm going you know I, I do that stuff I, I leave Justifying little notes it. I'm just yeah but I should say like Adios. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is what you're suggesting. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. And sometimes I feel a little cold doing it, but I got to be confident and I'm going to work. Uh, wish me luck. Uh, you know, you can handle it. You're going to have to c- deal with some things and I'm not going to be there to help and that's going to be good for you and you're going to learn from it. Um, and then daddy has to say this, that the partner has to say the same thing to the kids. Like, I'll be proud of mommy, daddy for the work they're doing. And also, I like to point out that some of the, when I go away, I'm going away to work. Uh, which is going to give us the opportunities to have experiences in our lives. So we need me to do that You like that, that well. sweater? Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> and, and just so you know, your spouse loves your kids as much as you do. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like we're, you know what I'm saying? Like, also, these feelings we have are so privileged because mm-hmm. we have an option to be like, you know, uh, this feeling because most people have to. Like single moms cannot apologize; they have to do it. You know what I mean? Like and, uh, and overnight nice and, nurses, and people driving. By, yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah. I I think mm-hmm. we're really also teaching them that you know this is you're living a privileged life. If if mommy gets to go away for a week to go to work, and you have um, a, a nanny, yeah. a, a grandma, and a dad who are twenty four seven on top of you, making sure you're okay. Like yeah. you and are. I think yeah. even, maybe even above nothing. all else to your modeling, this is something, mm-hmm. Neil, I think you do really, really beautifully for our kids that you have work that you love to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we can have one thing that our children grow up to do, like, wouldn't it be so exciting that they grow up and find something that they're passionate about and love oh, going look, to do it and spending their time doing it. And, you know, I remember growing up, it was never like, sorry, you have to go to school. Ugh, I know school is so rotten. My mom and dad were so good at being like, you get to go to school yeah. and you get to be with that awesome teacher and yeah. you get yeah. to go up for recess with your friends and you get to learn new Even things. Even when you and had the was, babysitter coming, I was like, guess who's coming? I loved yeah. going to school. Yeah. And yeah. I always felt like I was lucky to go. And and we both love our work and we feel lucky when we get to do it. We even sometimes debate whether work is the right word for it because it's oh, like yeah. such a passion. We are yeah. so, that you know, like, what a great work. thing that we're modeling for our kids. I know that you can find it because I remember when I was younger, I didn't think that was possible. I thought that you just go to a job and then the day ends and then you get the weekend and you dread Monday. We even call it work life. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, and name. we're trying to teach our kids to find like what the, what's their find happiness. Your happiness. Happy. Find, Sorry, that's was, that's yeah. very confusing. Although yeah. yesterday we were at breakfast, yeah, for and an ambulance had to be called because I don't know what was happening, but someone was on a chair in the middle of the restaurant, <laughs> tanking, and of course, oh. yeah, it was just like my one of my kids is just does not handle. She's an empath, and she was just like, is he? Die like I said, I couldn't eat. Oh I had to. Gosh. And you're at, had you're, to like, at, you're at a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, and so the ambulance home. comes yeah. in. I go. Here's the thing. I think we know what you don't want to do in life, <laughs> yeah. and it's gonna be a, a doctor and a paramedic. And she's like, "You're right." Yeah. So there's a positive. This was a life lesson for yeah, you. Exactly. That One that's thing off the list. That is right. Now you can cross medical off your list. You we are getting closer it. to your passion. That's One moment I, at a time. That's what I said to her. <laughs> this uncomfortable feeling is really good for you. Follow those instincts. Yeah. Yeah. No med school for you. Exactly. <laughs> Keep seeing jobs you don't want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting closer to what you do. There's a weird sub tech or sub like almost subplot to this idea that we're talking about but being away and work and, and sort of back and forth I'm like I'm like I'm, I'm like thinking in my head I'm like I think part of the reason I do couch my leaving and coming back in this envelope of sorry I'm doing this is because deep down I'm scared my kids will be away from me a lot when I get older that's Aww. deep that's Whoa, very deep. They, really? and you know what they may but they may come back you know what I mean? Like Wait, they you're may. already worried that they're going to be away from you? No, that, yeah, I think that's, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, that, uh. what is below that? I'm like, I think it's because when I get older, I don't want, you know, it's the, it's the Cat Stevens song. You know, it's like, you know what I'm talking about. The child arrived just the other yeah, day, yeah. came to, and then like, as the song goes on, it's like, 
I, I you know, I, I want to be just like you, Dad. And the dad was never there. And then the oh. kid's never there for the dad. Well, in this extreme. That, you know what oh, I'm talking about? Father and son. You're worried that they're going to know you as a way, so they're going to just do what they know, which yeah. is to be a way. Yeah. That uh, is so uh, cute. Oh, gosh. I, don't, I can't even, like, I can only see to tomorrow. Here's my theory. <laughs> here's what I'm going to tell you. That your, your, <laughs> your, that your moment, what your kids will remember is how you made them feel, not what you actually do. So it's like, think about your childhood. You mostly remember how you felt, not what you were made. Yeah. So I'm always like, when you're home, what are you giving them? And when you're away, what are you giving them? Which is the conversations that you can have on the phone and the presence that you bring. It's not actually the length of time. Because think about parents who are divorced. We come from divorced families. Mm-hmm. And I was 50-50, sometimes less or more. And I, it's not like, I, 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 that wasn't my choice. Yeah. But I saw my, my parent, one parent, half the time. Right. And I don't think of them less or don't think of them yeah. as mm-hmm. bad. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. So yeah. And I think it comes back to our own narratives that we have as parents yeah, too, it's right? Your because narrative. like as the parent that stays home with the kids while Neil goes and travels, they're totally fine. And actually like it's just a different – It's macaroni different, and cheese night. So Daddy excited. doesn't like mac and cheese. Literally as soon as he says, okay, I'm going away tonight, they're like, yes, macaroni and cheese. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just what I don't they have like when he's away. And, and, and it's a different <laughs> – we have we get into like a different zone and a different mode and it's actually really great and then when he comes back it's really great too but it's different they don't see it as like no. a time where there's a deficit yeah and it's also just it's different. your narrative that you have it's really it's the conversations yeah. it's not the actions and the growth I mean, is that to be okay with whatever they choose to yeah. do that's yeah. something that, you know because I'm from an East Indian family culturally it's like frankly we used to only a generation did we all lived together like you you didn't live away from your parents ever you know ever right right, right. The, that's the, intense the, the, for the, the, the groom. Uh, Mary's a bride. There's typically a dowry involved, and the parents come with. The yeah. parents are there. They might be in the basement. So that's your but narrative. They're there. That's the. That's only two generations ago. So yeah. right. Like, so then it's like, not only am I not living with my parents, which is, there's a little bit of guilt about. Although it's hilarious, my dad still says like, <laughs> "Why don't you come home? Like, why don't you guys move in? We have lots of space." I'm like, I'm married with kids. Like, are you kidding me? But anyway, We're not uh, so keen on Whippy personally here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just my parents live an hour outside of town. But the point is, but then baked into that is a second narrative, which is like being okay with what your kids do yeah. even yeah. if they go to the other side of the world and that's um, that's hard that's a hard still thought. love I you wanna, i don't want to think about that now it's just, <laughs> they will unless Have they you, are you like an children. enlightened being or like how'd you get to that that's a hard place to get to i think you got there though no i think you just you have to be thankful for like you can't really what i yeah. can't control i can't control but i can support and i can like i'd way rather not fight it i just go with it you know what it's am i gonna, why am, to just go with why it. am i gonna fight what am i gonna fight what i don't know yet i'm gonna just live it and you, you say that as if it's just just nothing, but it's also that's it is very one. enlightened. It is you're you're very Buddhist. Yeah. Well, a, well <laughs> yeah. if you read the book, you'll see. I don't think I just I think as a child who comes from a family that that was you didn't know which way was right or left. You know, it was very very fluid, chaotic, lots of people, lots of kids. I think you just learn. Yeah, you're gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. Nat always says, if she wants to get stuck on an island, it's with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll build a boat. I'll find a something to eat and I'll get us out of there. <laughs> she knows it. Amazing, amazing philosophy. And with having that strength of mind also gives such that we're just closing up on the confidence, go give such confidence to your children being around like a person like that, because then they can think, well, then I can do it too. And yep. you get that mentality in your mind. I, you know, what's weird. My daughter's so afraid of being homeless. It's such a weird fear of hers. And I'm like, but then you'll just become a waitress. Like I, I always knew that. It's if- so funny. You have an answer for that. I have that fear too. Of being homeless? Yeah, yeah. Like oh deep my God. down. I, I, yeah. I was like, I'll just, fig- I'll go, I would just figure it out. I would, I would, I would just go get a job as a waitress, and then I'd become the manager, and then I'd Did become the general. Know? What? Did you let her know she? Could yeah, get I'm a like job? you're you're gonna do everything. You're gonna you're gonna have a lot of jobs, and you whatever you have, you have to find jobs with no education. Like you have to be able to make money with no education, and then you're fine for life. Mm-hmm. Like, as, if you can always just pick it up. So, uh, can you f- finish that thought for me? I love this. So, if you're homeless, you just get a job as a waitress, meaning you don't need education. You can walk in on your you, social you, skills You use your so personality. Yep. So, if you can figure out if Keep you going. can figure out people, yep. which is the biggest skill you have. So, if you can understand a person and, and the way they tick, you're way ahead of the curve. And if you are, are – our biggest thing is hardworking. If you can be resilient and show up on time, anything is possible. If you want to put in, in the time, it's not even a skill. You can Google. You can figure everything out. What an Anything incredible is, mentality to go through life with. 
That's beautiful. You no, but really, you can figure anything. You, well, you're so clearly confident in that. I don't, I don't think <laughs> everyone feels free. that way. Oh, Nat, do we need a therapist? No, no. I, I feel like I feel like everybody like you do know you know that. I know that logically, no, but there's but a you root would emotion. Do the same, because look at you, look what you've created for yourself. Maybe I've created that because of that fear. Of course, we're all scared that we're all gonna like. But that's why we keep working hard and keep showing up. I'm actually not scared about. It. I just figure. I just think you you. you I, I know I can waitress at the very least. I do find it interesting that in the world that we occupy, a lot of people that are doing really well and being very successful come from not having mm-hmm. much. Totally. You know, there's a whole like I scrounging do. for resources mentality that comes from, yeah. not ha- you know, you go for it and you can't turn it off. And you hear that like some, some really interesting stories come from people that didn't have as much. And then there's people that just li- travel in the right crew or the crew that always just they just stayed the same, at the same place but the really interesting stories I find come from people who have a little bit of like yeah. I want it to be better than the way it was I want to work harder I want to have more because I know what it feels like not to speaking of more mm. let's transition to your third and final book before I because I'm now, gonna, this I, is all Nat and she's got that beautiful <laughs> picture right above your head which is also the same what is that photographer is, I see a bunch of beach umbrellas yeah, a bunch of people in Cinque Terre, Italy Oh, that's – is that a uh, – so you – you is that, and sorry, it relates to this book, which I'm about to introduce. Gray Mallon. Oh, that's by Gray Mallon. Okay, yeah. so this book is called Be Our Guest by Gray Mallon. Yes. Okay, so a, a, a famous photographer turned, in this book, ch- children's book author. Yeah. He hired a whole crew of animals from like a humane Hollywood animal agency, yeah. took them to his favorite hotel, yes. and did yep. a photo shoot of, of like lions and monkeys and penguins yeah. walking around. It appears that he like added the – Story and on top because the story is you know it's like look I see some balloons you think there's gonna be a party it's just a camel at a pool yeah you know <laughs> it, yeah. it's really just a picture of a camel at a pool you know what yeah I mean? yeah yeah and and then it goes through but it's an interesting book because and you're gonna tell us why this stuck with you and resonated with well, you well uh, so this is funny that he made a kids book because I've always like admired his um, photography dreamed one day that I would have a big one of his pieces in my house it's really which expensive you have. by the way yeah which, this this photo yeah. he's a very expensive. Yeah, uh, is, but isn't don't they just make tons of copies of it? Stop or? it! No, I just don't understand. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> it's a coveted. Because I see in the corner now, and now that you mentioned that, I see number nine. How many are there? It's a real, a real. So I won't ask how much it costs. A lot. <laughs> that that one costs, I think, five thousand dollars. That's a lot for me. And I had that's to a it. lot for a picture. Yeah. God, now I feel stupid. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you love it. You've always loved it, and that's what makes it so beautiful. amazing. And I've been to that place a few times. But what I love about his photography is that, like, he just shows different parts of the world, and sometimes takes like takes like normal moments, but whatever filters he adds, it just seems like a place I want to be. And Ooh, interesting. so I, I have another one, another one in my bedroom, but and another one over there. Uh, no, that one's a different artist. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, she's. Uh, you're, <laughs> you like art, and one kid, only one kid, she likes a lot. That's true. So we're looking around the living room. We see a photo of one child holding a lollipop over their eye. Lots and, of black and white boxes. And then lots there's of the beach cat nat family right there. That's cat nat and all the kids. Oh, I made it God. on the show. That's, a, that's only four by six. Everything else is like a hundred by a hundred. <laughs> so I really love the photographer and. And um, I ended up like, well, I was I did, like message with the photographer on Instagram with his people. And then I ended up, somebody gave me his books, adult f- photography books. And one of my children would just end up, I would see him like all by himself going through all the pictures, looking at the pictures, asking about where the places were. And it was like his time to calm down. He just appreciated. And he was like, where in the world is this? And he loved to go read, read, look at the pictures over and over and over again. I was like, oh gosh. And then they came up with a children's book and I couldn't believe it because that's exactly what I th- I thought that he wanted. Turns out he likes the adult books better. But the other kids love it just to look at the animals. And I've also been to that hotel oh, that the book is the Parker. Yeah, I went to a, what, one of my best friends. Is it in California? Uh, is it pa- uh, Palm, Palm Springs. Springs? Oh, Palm Springs. So she got where's married Palm there. What? Palm Springs is California. Yeah. Did you say California? No, I said uh, where's Palm Springs? Oh, okay. California. Yeah. There's so many springs, <laughs> and palms, and so <laughs> yeah. many cities. And I get confused. Listen, we're with you are. on that. And so, yeah, that's really those... loves decor too. Sometimes yeah. and she goes through phases. Right now, oh, but... she. But then she'll cook. She's very like, uh, what's that? Martha Stewarty? No, no. <laughs> no but really, uh, oh, I don't know. About some Visual. She's passionate. She's passionate. Like. She has good taste, mm, and she's able to pull, like, is. she's in charge of all of our aesthetics oh, and interesting. the way things look, and she can, like, just put food on a plate, and it looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. It's not artistic. It's like... An eye. 
She has an eye. There's yeah. something that you notice coming into your house, Nat, and seeing like all of it connects. This book, this um, this beautiful photograph on the wall of the beach, and we talked even before we started recording about like wanting this just like juicy, overflowing, colorful, messy yes. family yes. life. Yes. And I feel like this book, especially with it being like a hotel of animals, yeah. to me when I read it, I felt right. like it just like it's like a symbolic it, of my I, home. Exactly, mm. I children. felt like it was so oh, symbolic. the animals, like, yeah, a beautiful like, house with animals. It got it. <laughs> You're the all, you know, the all animals. these people coming in and out of your house and what is it about that 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 makes you want it like I just I feel like something it's all connected it's a you? chapter in our book believe it or not yeah it's called how Macaulay Culkin ruined my life but it's basically um I remember at some time in my life we were sitting with a bunch of friends and we were talking about what uh what movies resonate with you the most and what what seems like you know feels like you and there's a oh, and oh. we're all looking at the door now the door oh. now. hi oh. <laughs> I thought they were going to school. <laughs> <laughs> One kid's home. <laughs> we're just podcasting. Okay. Silence. Do you want me to pause? <laughs> no, no. We'll keep going. I, we're, we're almost done, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Um, and then I remember seeing like the Home Alone movies and seeing how it was so hectic and crazy. And I didn't know how many kids belonged to how many kids. And I was like, I love that. That's what I want my house to be like. I want it to feel hectic. I don't know why. It just seems like fun. Everything's not so serious. Everything. Mm -hmm. Like there are some designers that I, I, I love because they use such colorful, like, you know, fun. And just so that the li the, my life feels light instead of heavy and fun instead of serious. You so embody that, both of you, and just kind of embracing the the life in life, mm -hmm. like really juicing that lemon, really squeezing it out. And we take those okay, moments. You, that is amazing that we project that. Good. Yes. You do. You good. Do. Well, we, we, just, do. We, we do. just did a podcast about where well, we're in a rut. Awesome oh, God, it's so good to hear that we're not in a rut. But we do, <laughs> we do know that we, the two of us, like to have fun, and we get to have fun together, and we get to do all of this crazy stuff. And the fact that I have four kids, and she has three, but we do it together, and we have seven, is like that seems like a good number. And now there's a dog coming. It's like more, a more. Dog. More. I got a puppy. Oh my goodness. Yep, there's gonna be a puppy. And like if people are ever like she's always Does it feel there yet? The puppy? No, the the whole Your thing. Hecticness? Does it feel at that point where that you want it to be I at? No. Uh no. Knowing how much you guys both crave change, I can sense yeah. that totally. <laughs> and how much you crave growth because I, th you're I think growing that the craziest thing is I've, from like a business optics and like a writing a book, like none of it really, uh when you're in it and you're always moving, you, there's nothing that you Life is never I I made it moment. There's nothing. There's never in a. I don't. I don't. Mm. I don't think you're living. It's a practice, not a destination. I we just don't even think that far. Mm -hmm. I feel like Nat and I really. Uh, it's this is weird, but we when our energy is, we know what what what's happening based on how we feel when we're together. And I think that for us, there's key moments like when we take our kids away. Uh, the two of us rent a house in Florida. We try to twice a year for two weeks. And those are the moments where it's like, this was everything we do is worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way, because, and we don't even need the husbands. It's just a moment yeah. where we get to spend as moms, as mothers, you know, because I think there's so much shit that goes on every day that you're trying to live your life. And when we can pause and just buy what we want for them, like in terms of like ice cream every day and don't like, there's not like, oh my God, there's no, there's no thought into it. We live every moment just as a day. And I think for us, those are the moments that we, like when it gets too far, when we're not doing those moments, then we get like run down. So mm -hmm. when people are like self-care, our self-care is often isolated with our kids the two of us, we don't have to manage anything but enjoying them. Yeah. Does that make sense? And like, we feel good when we're in a situation where we can just say yes and we can do what we want to do and make sure the kids are happy and free and like the hecticness of the schlepping of like, we don't even have a, we, we, we get golf carts there because we hate just even getting in and out of cars, seatbelts, yeah. cars. They don't have to wear that. clothes. None There's like that. no clothes, like it's shoes. bathing, no, no shoes. Every <laughs> store we go into, they don't have to wear shoes. It's bathing suits and outdoor. Like it's like beach, pool, Good weather all day, and they're free. Yeah, like it's like the kids are really well behaved. They when must they're, crave it too. When they, they love crave it, it's they like they're it. the best behaved children when you have them outside yeah. all day in a place where they can do. Like we go bike. Like it, that's our, that is our time when we're like we haven't done it since February where we've just had them to mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. So I think that that's and then the times when we are not on vacation, we. We crave a busy schedule. Like when we have idle time, we get very antsy. 
So right now, so people will say to us, I can't believe all the things that you guys do and you're doing this and that. And it's like, we feel like we have space for so much more, something something more. And, when, and then we go and create something new. Like now we're doing a virtual VIP event online because we have time to do it, we feel like. And so I, we're, we really have, we're capable of a lot. We have the energy for a lot. Mm -hmm. and There's some like, kind of ultimate place that you want it to grow to, some ultimate dream that... If Never this happens. You feel. Low. I feel like things are changing so quickly, yeah. as you just said. When we get there, like I think that what we do is we live from our gut. So when we know something isn't working, we change courses before people tell us to, and that's why I. That's part of our success. I that, think, and, and it's what excites us. Yeah, which is great. I think that we listen to ourselves because we basically make content for ourselves. It's who we're making content for. Is we 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 share what we're going through rather than we're not trying to create something for people. Listening to ourselves, following our guts, making time to be free. Yeah. Uh, Kat and Matt, thank you so much for coming on Three Books. Thank you so much for having us. God, you made us sound so smart. Can you come again? <laughs> <laughs>
The other club, of course, is the secret club. I can't tell you more about it other than the only way to get in is to call our phone number, one eight three three read a lot And with that, as always, let's go to the phones now. Hi, my name is Dan Johnson, and I'm from Frederick, Maryland, or Newmarket to be more exact, Newmarket, Maryland. Um, I just heard uh, about the uh, comments about the music on the podcast, and I wanted to lo- I wanted to uh, say something because I'm a musician, and I listen, listen carefully to a lot of the music used on the different podcasts. Everybody has kind of a different take on it. And I really like the way you use music on your podcast. So kudos to you or whoever your, um, you know, music uh, master is over there, or up there in Canada. <clears throat> uh, and the other thing I want to mention is that I'm all in on the Analog Secret Club, and I have to figure out how to send uh, how to send money analog. That I guess I guess check would be the most, you know, the way we used to do it. Uh, so anyhow, uh, keep up the good work. Every show is fascinating. Um, you are delight. And so are most of your guests and all of your guests are intriguing and, and, and interesting and inspiring. Uh, so, so long for now. Bye. Thank you so much to Dan from Maryland, not just Maryland though, new market, Maryland, by the way, I looked up New Market on Wikipedia. The population is, as of the latest census, 656. Dan, you are helping us penetrate New Market. You tell friends and family about it. We've still only got like 10% of the population listening over there. I appreciate you calling from New Market, Maryland. And I double appreciate the fact that during your entire phone call, there were birds tweeting in the background. I wonder if any of our listeners could identify the birds based on the bird call. I'm fascinated by those people. What what's down in Maryland? The Baltimore Orioles? Like what is going on? I, I actually bumped into bumped into. I actually found found. I actually spotted uh, a mockingbird the other day. Like I'm I'm walking around Toronto. I'm on like the West Toronto Rail Path. If anybody knows it. And I see this bird, it just looks the size of a robin, it's got great gray feathers, and I start listening to it. And honestly, I'm standing there listening to it for half an hour. I'm taking videos, I'm looking at apps, I finally identify it's a mockingbird. Of course, the thing is doing like garbage truck noises and seagull noises and cardinal noises, so eventually I figure out that it's not, you know, one call. But what were the birds in the background of Dan's voicemail? That would be a mystery that we maybe try to solve. Um, music. Thanks so much for commenting on the music. Yeah, there has been a fun debate going on. Uh, is there too much? Is it too long? Blah, blah, blah. I always say the reason the music is so long at the beginning of the show is to help me and hopefully you ground and recenter ourselves. I want these conversations to have a depth and a heart and a, a pastefulness to them that removes us mentally from the frenetic slipstream of society the urgent bells, the urgent whistles, the dopamine inflicted bing, bang, boom that we get from every podcast, every YouTube video, every social media channel. Everybody knows how to hijack brains these days. You show people things fast, you show them fun, quick, urgent, you know, and I want this to be the opposite. I want it to be slow. I want it to be thoughtful. Am I always slow and thoughtful? No. It's why it's a muscle that I'm trying to grow. That's why we're spending time going out to Vancouver, talking to people like Michael Harris, author of Solitude. We're trying to practice and grow this muscle of how do we slow down? And I think that's partly why, I hope that's partly why we're getting a lot of messages from people saying, you were great company on a long road trip. Um, I was I was waiting in a hospital for 12 hours and I listened to six six podcasts. And hopefully why people are starting to say things like, I'm going to join the like listening to every show club. We're trying to use a texture in this show where we alternate the sort of feel of the guests from show to show. So we keep that going. Anyway, I'm overthinking it as I always do about everything, but that's why I do the music super long. And if you skip it and fast forward it, great. No problem. I hold nothing against you, Uh, but I'm glad Dan that you don't. By the way, to answer your question, Roberto Ercoli composed that music specifically for three books. He's an incredible Toronto-based composer, uh, and I commissioned him for this podcast after discovering him when I did my TED Listen two years ago. 
in Toronto called How Do You Maximize Your Tiny Short Life? Um, if you listen to that TED Listen, so it's not a TED Talk. I literally just ask questions for 18 minutes or so. Um, you'll hear music in the background, and Roberto composed it for me. Um, so whenever I need music composed in my life, I call Roberto, and you should too. And if you go to threebooks.co and you check out the FAQ, you'll find his name and his website and his contact information for all your music composing needs. Okay. Now, let's go over to the review of the chapter. This chapter's review comes from ACARP10, left on iTunes. ACARP10, if you're listening, drop us a line because you get a free signed book. Okay. Subject, uh, binge-worthy. Ha ha. You know those two hands with like little arrow things above them? Ha. I've binge listened the first 18 chapters of this podcast over the last couple weeks, and I think it's safe to say I'll be hooked until 2031, when the podcast is scheduled to end. It is refreshing to listen to Neil interview a vast array of people, ask interesting and informative questions, and do it in his own unique way. Oh, and of course, the fact that this is all around books. Thanks, Neil, for creating such an informative, thought-provoking, and self-reflective podcast. I've implemented a lot of ideas, which you have talked about with your guests, like putting my phone in black and white, and carrying a book with me wherever I go to read more this year and in the years to come. And now, for those who have made it to the end of my book review, welcome to the end of the review club. Ha! What are you doing? Stop reading the reviews and just go listen already. Yes! Thank you, ACARP10. I love the end of the podcast club, like, like sort of sewn in shout out to the end of your review. And like I said, whenever we read a review online, it could be on iTunes, could be on Stitcher, could be on YouTube, could be an email to us, whatever, we always mail that person anywhere in the world a free signed copy of whichever book of mine they want. The book of awesome, the book of even more awesome, the book of holiday awesome, the happiness equation, uh, the children's book, awesome is everywhere, whatever. I highly recommend, by the way, uh, that you pick ho- the book of holiday awesome as it is officially my only book out of print, meaning that you cannot buy that unless you buy it used online. So who has the biggest pile of them all? Me, because when they put it out of print, my dad literally called the publisher and was like, I'll take every single one you got left. So my dad, I'm not joking, got a skid full of the Book of Holiday Awesome delivered to his garage where it continues to be pecked away at over the years. Would you like to peck away at my Book of Holiday Awesome skid? Well, then leave a letter or a review for us on any channel uh, any channel you want. Okay, now it's time to close off with the word of the chapter. And for this word, let's go back over to Kat and Nat. And yeah, no. Pissed if someone doesn't make their bed, because I haven't. I I've, I've laxed on that, but they. Um, yeah, no. I'm like, and one I went takes into your kids' rooms this weekend. Everybody looked pretty neat. Yes, indeed, it is lapsed, lapsed. Cat said, "I've lapsed on that and having them make their bed." I was like, "Lapsed." You know what? That's a word we probably all have heard of. I was like, "What's the origin?" That that sort of jumped out at me in my in my brain. So I'm like, I'm looking it up online, and yes, yeah, and by the way, it's L A P S E D in this case, uh, and it comes from. The mid 15th century, the Latin word lapsus, L A P S U S, which means a slipping, a falling, a landslide, a flight of time, or falling into error. Originally, before that, it's from L A B I, laby, to glide, slip, slide, slink, fall. When you lapsed something, when you let something expire, it is originally meant to be slipping and sliding. I like that sort of mental picture of that word. It sounds like that. Does it sound like that? Lap sounds like slip. Um, so thank you to Kat for using lapsed. That rhymes. And now here we are at the end of another chapter of three books. Look, guys, we're, we're, going, we're doing 333 chapters. We're at 32, huh, almost at the 10% mark. This was a fun conversation. I had to buy a new like 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 recorder for this one so we could plug four microphones in it. So this is an experiment in many ways, just just space wise, sound wise, um, kind of discussion wise. How does it feel? I'd love your thoughts. I'd love your feedback. I love every kind of thing you could tell us about the show so that we could keep making it better. And now, until next time, just remember that you are what you eat. And you are what you read. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll talk to you soon.